big F big F big No, big F of B yeah. minus big F of B. Very good. So we said that the original fundamental theorem of calculus was that if I integrate this function, right, it should equal capital F, right, which is the antiderivative of this little f, evaluated at b minus the antiderivative evaluated at d. Cool? For the second fundamental theorem of calculus, or the extension to this, what we're going to be looking at is uh, the derivatives of integrals. Okay, and we've done a little bit of that, but we talked about the derivative of the in and the integral. What do they do to each other? They cancel each other out, right? Well, most of the problems that we've been working with, um, on those problems where they're talking about the sand and all that stuff, and then they want to know the rate at which the amount of sand is changing on the beach, and then you have to integrate that integral function. I mean, get the derivative of that integral function that you had. And there was always only one variable at the top. Like it was like from 0 to t, or 1 to t, so on and so forth, right? That variable expression was only a single variable, a single letter. So in those particular cases, what, what, what was it that happened when I, inter when I got the derivative of that integral? What would we be left with? Just whatever the function was, right? Like if we were talking about the rate at which sand is being put on there, and you get the derivative of the integral of that, they would cancel out and you'd just be left with that r function or that s function or whatever the function was. Okay? You're going to notice later on that when we get an integral, and it's not from just a number to a variable like that, sometimes there's uh, integrals where there's two variables on there. Okay? That's not going to be the case to where they just cancel out. We're going to try and discover the second fundamental theorem of calculus before I just uh, spit it out to you. Okay? Sounds good? And the way we're going to do that is by actually figuring out the integral and then taking the derivative of that integral. So they're calling this integral right here capital F of X. Okay? And then they want you to find the derivative of that answer that you get. Cool? So it's going to be a little annoying at first. But you should have a big surprise at the end. So let's set up the integral. It says it's from 1 to x of this function, 4t minus t squared dt. So we first have to find the antiderivative and then evaluate it from 1 to x. So what's the antiderivative of this function? 2t squared, OK? Minus one third t to the third, evaluated from one to x. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. So let's plug in the x and let's see what we get. So we're going to get two x to the third minus one third x to the third. Out of that minus, plug in the one. So that's going to be two minus one third. Two minus one third is how many? thirds? Five thirds. Five thirds, right? Oh, I'm sorry, I put a three here, yeah. Two x squared, yeah, just kidding. You're right, you're right. I was already thinking this third when I was writing that. Okay, so we get six over three minus one third, that's five thirds? So we end up with 2x squared minus 1 third x to the third minus 5 over 6, yes? And that's this capital F that they wanted us to find. Okay? Now they want us to find the derivative of that function. So technically, are they asking me to get the derivative of this integral? Yeah. Yes. Okay, well if I'm getting the derivative of this integral, it would be like getting the derivative of this, right? Why did I put six? <laughs> yes, because it's six thirds minus one third, that's five thirds, right? Okay, yeah. good. Thank you, Luis. So, what would I end up with if I get the derivative of this function? Which would be the same thing as me getting the derivative of this. So now we've got to switch our mind and do derivatives. 4x minus x squared. Does that kind of look similar to what we started off with? 
Well, what was the only thing that changed? <laughs> changed from T's to what? <laughs> to X's, right? Let's try the next one. Okay, let's find that capital F of X, which is represented by the integral from 1 to X of this function, cosine of T. Let's see if the same thing happens here, as if we just end up with cosine of X. Okay? So what's the antiderivative of cosine? Sine. 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 <laughs> Evaluated from 1 to x, you need to know them quick. Okay, this one's the opposite, okay? When you're doing derivatives, derivative of cosine is negative sine, right? Remember, ask yourself, whose derivative is cosine? Sine, the derivative of sine is cosine. All right, cool, so what do we get here? Sine of x minus sine of 1, okay? Sine of 1, what would that be? Some number, right? Yeah. Okay, that's really all we need to make sure we understand. So if I want the derivative of this function, what would the derivative of sine of x be? Cosine, cosine of x, and what would the derivative of sine of 1 be? Zero. Zero. Okay, cool. So was the derivative of that function just cosine of x like we thought it would be? Wow. Okay. Let's look at this bottom one now. What changed here? Now we're going from 1 to x squared, right? Okay? So now let's see what happens on this problem, okay? So again, same idea. But now the integral is from 1 to x squared. And now we're integrating t cubed. So what would that give us? What's the antiderivative of this? to the fourth? Yeah. Evaluated from 1 to x squared. So plug in the x squared. So we're going to get 1 fourth x squared to the fourth minus 1 fourth times 1 to the fourth. Power to a power, what do I do with my powers? So this is really 1 fourth x to the what? Eighth, right? Minus what? One fourth. Okay. So now let's find the derivative of that function. What would it be? Two x to the seventh. So what happened here? Did it work that we just plug in the x? Like it worked on the other ones? What happens if I plug in the x squared? Because isn't that kind of what they were doing up here? Like they plug in the x and they would get this? You think? Let's see. What happens if I plug in the x squared down here? What would that give me? X to the 6. X to the 6? Yeah. So I'd have x squared to the 3rd. That gives me x to the 6. What am I missing in order to get 2x to the 7th? What do I have to multiply this by? 2x. 2x? Where do you think they got 2x from? Uh, huh? From the x squared. The derivative of what? Of x squared? Yeah. Wow. Is that 2x to the 7? <laughs> Is that what they're doing up on the top also? Let's see. If I plug in x, what would I get? Cosine of x and then times the derivative of x, what would the derivative of x be? Oh. Does it work here? Like in x? 4x minus x squared times the derivative of x? 1? Maybe that's the second fundamental theorem of Maybe. Maybe. Let's try another one. See what happens there. Because this is getting kind of annoying, right? To have to like actually find the integral and then get the derivative of it. It has to be an easier way, right? Maybe that was it. All right, so what would this one be? The integral from 1 to x squared of 6 times the square root of t dt. OK. 
Okay. So what's the antiderivative of this guy? This is t to the half, so it becomes 6t to the what? 3 over 2 divided by 3 over 2, which is really times 2 over 3, right? So what does that end up giving us? 4t to the 3 halves evaluated from 1 to x squared. Alright, so let's see what we get here. So we're going to get 4 times x squared to the 3 halves minus 4 times 1 to the 3 halves. So what's 2 times 3 halves? So we get 4x to the 3rd minus 4. And that's the f function. That's what the value of this integral is, right? Now if I want the derivative of that integral, what would it end up being? 12x squared. I want to be able to figure out a way to avoid having to do all this stuff in the middle and be able to just go from here to here. Okay? So let's see if that trick that you were talking about right now worked. Okay? What would happen? What would I do with that x squared, that top limit? Plug it in, right? That would be 6 times the square root of x squared. Times what? The derivative of that guy, which is 2x, right? So here this goes away, we get the 6x times the 2x. Does that give us the 12x squared? Ooh. Okay. Pretty cool? So that seems to work out. Okay. But what would happen, or what do you think would happen if I had another variable down here? Why is it that I'm ignoring that part? Because technically I'm supposed to plug that number in also. Very good. The derivative of the constant would be zero, right? So I would technically plug in one as well, and that would give me six square root of one times the derivative of that one, which would always be what? Zero. zero. Okay, so that's why technically we're ignoring that part. But that total thing is the actual second fundamental theorem of Okay? So for the most part on the AP test, there's always just one of them as being variables, but they could be. I don't know where they put two of them, okay, two variables in the limits. And you don't want to mess that up. Got it? So on the next page, I'm going to write the second <coughs> fundamental theorem of calculus. And we can kind of go through it. Okay? So it says, if capital F of X is equal to the integral of from P of X so let's say q of x, of some function f of t b t. Then the derivative of that integral will be what? What do we do with the limit? Plug it in, right? So f of whatever that top limit is times the derivative of that top limit, right? Minus f of the bottom limit, in this case is p, times the derivative of that bottom limit. Now for the problems that we've been working out, one of the limits was a constant. So that part with the constant, the derivative of it was always going to be zero. So that's why it was going away, and that's why we kind of weren't paying attention to that second part. But that's actually what was happening in the background. Okay? Cool? So we're going to go through the same problems we just did, but we're going to apply the shortcut real quick. Okay? So the first one that we got, I think the answer was just 4x minus x squared, right? The second one was just cosine of x, right? This one was 2x to the 7th. And this last one was 12x squared. We had to kind of do a little bit of work in order to get there. Now that we understand and we know the second part to the fundamental theorem of calculus, we can actually apply it. Do I ever actually integrate in the process of applying the second fundamental theorem of calculus? No, I don't ever actually integrate. Okay. 
And I'm going to use this when they ask me to find the derivative of a what? Of an integral, okay? So anytime you need to find the derivative of an integral, you need to apply the second fundamental theorem of calculus. Got it? That's when you use it. And it's going to be whenever I have what in my limits? Variables. Yeah, that's what's going to kind of give it away. <clears throat> All right, so let's do it. Okay, so if I do this one, the theorem says to plug in the top limit. So that gives us 4x minus x squared, right? Times the derivative of the top limit. So what's the derivative of x? 1. Minus, plug in the bottom limit. So that's 4 minus 1 times the derivative of 1, which is what? 0. So do you see why that part will go away? And we're just left with the same answer that we got? Without having to go through all that work regarding antiderivatives. Easy? Try this next one. Plug in the number for the variable. So get cosine of what? x times 1 minus cosine of 1 times 0. That part goes away. 